Hey everyone, Tommy from TechNexus and thanks for joining me for today's video. Yesterday we covered um, the creation and the sort of back-end project setup uh, of a PNID project and today I wanted to have a look at briefly um, setting up a title block and maybe we might get into a little bit of drafting and see how we go for time. Now setting up the title block, if we go into the PNID drawings and we right click on it and we say new drawing, it gives us the directory or the, the file name of the DWT file. Now PNID like AutoCAD or vanilla AutoCAD uses a DWT file in its creation. Uh, of the pin IDs and if I click on the little dialog box there you can see it takes us to the template file and we have pin ID ISO A1 color dependent uh, plot styles so you can use your own AutoCAD title block or open up one of the existing ones now I'm just going to open up the existing one so I just go use the normal AutoCAD open come down here and go to DWT and then paste in the file name and I'm presented with the standard uh, pin ID title block. Now for new people, this might be a good way to get familiar with how to set up a title block. And what you can do is ultimately bring in your own A1 sheet or AO or A3, whichever size you want to do, and replace this part of the, the frame or, or the, the, the title block with your own. And you'll also see in here, there are fields. And I think it might have been a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago, I did talk about placing new fields in here. And you can see that um, these are pieces of text, M text, but they actually have a project field in here. If you're doing your PNID title blocks in vanilla AutoCAD, you will not get this project pull down. So you have to do it from uh, Plant3D and just open a file, not via the project manager. And you can see there are different entries in here. So the drawing area, the author, any other custom fields. And with the custom fields, again, I can populate a whole bunch in here depending on what it is that you've got in there and if we also go go down I can even drill through some of the information on those uh, pin IDs as well on some of the, the, the plant 3D files as well as you can see some of those properties are populated in here and it just means that if you make changes to the pin ID to the project then all your title box will update because that one entry in the database was updated as for paper space and model space, there's always big discussion on which one to use, whether it's paper space uh, and model space or just model space on my own. My personal preference is for paper space and model space. So we do have a viewport in here. And if I look at the properties of that viewport, uh, it is locked to a scale of one to one. So then that way, you know, if I switch over to um, model space, then this this brown box that comes with the template gives us the area into which we can put our pin ID uh, information. So any of the the equipment, the, the lines, the off-page connectors have to be inside this, this brown box here that is inside the viewport that is part of the sheet. And you can see because the view is locked, the drawing or the title block will move with it. If I was to keep this unlocked, so go to this way, lock to go no, and now when I click inside it, you'll see the box moves around and you can zoom in and out. And ultimately, you're just gonna get uh, bad scaling in there as well. So if you draw it to, to that and you, you zoom out, uh, you know, if we just change the title there, so you can see the scale is uh, 0.388. And again, things can just get messy. So it's good practice just to come in here, keep that at a scale of one to one, and then that way everything you have in here is at the scale that you want it. 
you make sure that it's obviously all legible at a one-to-one -one scale on an uh, A1 or an AO sheet or whatever it is that you decide to do. You can put this viewport, this is on layer zero, you might put it on layer def points. So usually layer def points in AutoCAD terms is uh, not non-plottable. So you can just see, if it's hard to see on the screen, the printer here is grayed out, which means it's not going to be plotted. You could make another one in here and, and do the same thing as well, a no plot layer if you really wanted to. And you can see that the default template has this box as a no plot layer as well. With the line types, you will have to work out if you're going to be doing your line type scales at 1 to 1 or 1 in 10. Uh, or 10 times greater. So it will all depend on the line type scales that you use for the corporate template for your client for whatever else, whether you keep your LT scale at a scale of one or at a scale of 10, it really is is dependent on, on you know, this, this standard that you're trying to achieve. Also as well, if you are gonna use this pin ID ISO template file, probably save it out to another DWT file, so just go save as and give it another name, keep it as a DWT. A good thing to, to do is either copy it to a different directory, put in here what it is, uh, paper size, whether it's metric or imperial, even and even the version. So if we were put, to put a version under here, I might put V2020 at the end of it, and that'll inform people that it's a 2020 template, not a 2019 template as well. So a lot of that will depend on you know, file naming, file formats, all of that kind of stuff, which uh, hopefully in this day and age, the, the corporate template should already be set with a lot of the AutoCAD uh, entries in there anyway. Now in here as well, the, the default text is standard. Uh, I like to use trebuchet and then we go apply and close and you can see it changes it all to trebuchet and that way um, all your templates will come out the same. So I'm just going to close this and say no to the saving and have a look at the one that I've already created. So I did this before, so just off the bat I'm going to make the style trebuchet just so it looks like what I want it to be. and you can see here that we have the viewport frame and then I can start plugging in uh, some lines, equipment and whatever else. Now before we even get to that point, I just want to go through the palettes. Now this is the PIP palette. So if I start putting a line here in model space and also remember when you do do it, if I throw it in paper space and then go into model space and try and throw a valve on that line, it's not going to find the line because the line's in a completely different space. So if you are going to be using paper space model space, remind yourself, remind everyone that they have to double click inside the viewport first and then do the line commands. And then that way, if whatever we place on there, so if I throw a valve on there, you'll see the valve comes in and it breaks the line accordingly and does whatever else it needs to do, okay? So looking at the standard ones, there's normal pipelines. So you've got major minor process lines, secondary lines, uh, and there'll be a few other ones here. There's some instrument lines, which if you're watching yesterday with all of those tool palettes, remember to keep the tool palette open, come in here and customize the project and then add it to the palette that's existing. Pumps, so under equipment, we've got pumps, compressors, uh, reboilers, uh, storage tanks and any other vessels and drivers and agitators. So for beginners, it might be handy just to keep this as is. And then as you slowly progress through time and setting up the templates, you can set up your own menus here. The valves are obviously in there. There is some control valves to place. Various fittings in here, which we can go through once we start placing them. Instrumentation, which would be definitely important for your project and any other non-engineering items. And this is where the off-page connectors, uh, the flow arrows, any tie-in points and drains and that sort of thing as well. Now, sometimes you find you might switch to the ISO standard, and this is going to be a problem because if I was to place an equipment from here, it turns around and gives me an error and says the symbol can't be found in the current project. 
because the project was set up as PIP, you can't use the ISO symbols. Same thing goes for ISA. Okay, and if I do equipment again and throw in a compressor. Okay, so the compressor exists, but the air exchanger doesn't. Okay, so the tank, ISA cone roof tank doesn't exist. Uh, what's this one here? Mechanical driver, that one does exist. Conveyors, doesn't exist. So when you are going to be putting in things from other libraries, you really have to get all your libraries sorted and base it on a particular standard before you start jumping around all of these ones. And you, you're just going to get errors. Um, people do ask on the forums what's you know why that, that happens. It's just how... The program is set up so you you again as I said yesterday you will have to uh, spend a bit of time setting up your templates first and then go through and start your modeling if you don't uh, have the time or energy to set up a template use the standard pip ISO ISA DIN or JS ISO standard and then just run with it and then that way you, all you have to do is come back and change the title box and the symbology is set according to that standard Okay, so that's all I'm going to cover today. Just briefly discussing how to set up a title block, the paper space, model space, and the palettes. And then I think tomorrow we'll make a start on doing some modeling, uh, maybe even converting elements and uh, having a bit of a dive into to how we would draft and uh, set up a PNID. So thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't, but please do subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell icon for daily notifications of all of my videos, and I will see you tomorrow where we are going to get stuck into some drafting and uh, start finally getting a bit of information and data happening on our, our pin ID here. So I will see you tomorrow for all of that. So thanks for watching.